In the previous five lessons, we covered comping and playing walking bass lines over a medium tempo jazz blues progression in the key of G. Now we're going to turn our attention to soloing, single note solos. So I have prepared a two chorus, 24 bar solo here I'd like to play for you. And it's inspired by you know, the great alto saxophonist Charlie Parker, trumpeter Dizzy Gillespie, and great guitar players like Charlie Christian, Wes Montgomery, and Grant Green. So I'll play for you at a medium up tempo swing groove. And then I'll play it again a little slower, and then we'll break it down. So we're playing over this progression that review the chords. We have G7, G13, C7, or C9. And then we do a 2-5 to C, D minor 7, G7 altered, C7. And then we go to F7, F13, G7, C7, B minor 7, E7 altered, A minor 7 is your 2, and then D7 altered. And then G13, 1, 6, 2, 5. E7 altered, A minus 7, D7 altered. Then it begins again. Okay, so um, taking this strategy, or tactic, should I say, of uh, targeting chord tones on a downbeat. So I have a little couple pickup notes before the first downbeat. So it's one, two, three. Okay, so I'm targeting the third of G, which is always, that's your money note, the third, right? It's always the best bet. But I'm doing a little decorative hammer on. Remember, it is the blues, right? So you want to inject some bluesy elements into it. Okay, so then I'm kind of outlining a G9 chord here. And then on the downbeat of bar two, when it's going to C9, C is my targeted chord tone, the third. But I'm, again, I'm doing the, the thing where I'm doing the minor third to the major third. I guess they call that an appoggiatura in classical music. You know, your lower neighbor tones. And then going into bar three, we have this D minor nine to G 13. Okay, so I'm playing an F major seven arpeggio, but over a D bass note gives you that nice D minor nine sound. And then in bar four, to bar five, that's a juicy G7 altered dominant lick. I'm using the G diminished whole tone scale, also known as the G super locrian mode. What that is, it's, um, it's the A flat melodic minor scale's seventh mode. So A flat melodic minor would be But if you start on the seventh note of the scale, G, and play that octave to octave, you get. A 
very tense and dramatic sounding scale that hits all those altered tones. You know, you get your sharp nine, your flat nine, your sharp five, your flat five. Use your root, your flat nine, sharp nine, major third, flat five or sharp 11, sharp five, AKA flat 13, and your flat seventh root. And that begs to resolve to C9, which we do. So we, in bar four, we have, and then I'm playing basically a C7 arpeggio, landing on the fifth of C, which is G, and then there's a flat seven, third, and then going into this F13 chord. Okay, I'm uh, outlining an F9, F13 sharp 11 arpeggio, so. I'm thinking C minor major nine or E flat major seven sharp five. And the parent scale for that, this is the Elydian dominant mode. So off of the F, it's the C melodic minor scale. Starting on F, it's the fourth mode of C melodic minor. So that would be It's a really cool scale. It gives you the root, second, major third, and then a sharp four of Lydian, five, six, and then a flat seven of mixed Lydian. So it gives you the money notes of Lydian, sharp four, sharp 11, and the flat seven of mixed Lydian. And you notice I'm using a an occasional pull off here and there. And then going back to G in bar seven, here's a third. Walking right up to the third of C7. Again, the thirds are your, your fallback tone. Always when you're, when in doubt, shoot for the third because you can't go wrong. Okay, that's B minor seven. That's a nice little chromatic walk up to, to A, which is the seventh of B minor seven. That's pretty cool. I'm outlining a B flat major triad. But over E, you see that really haunting, hauntingly beautiful sounding E7, sharp nine, flat five, or sharp 11, Peggio. So we have an ascending voice leading going on. This is the way that beautifully resolves up to the, the ninth of A minor nine. So bar six. Chord tone, chord tone, chord tone. Okay, that was a nice little legato slide. I'm trying to break things up, not just do this down up alternate picking. By the way, I'm using my own weird idiosyncratic alternate picking approach of upstrokes in the downbeats and downstrokes in the upbeats. I apologize for that. That's unorthodox, it's unusual. And if that messes you up, I'm, I'm sorry, but that's just the way my jazz soloing style kind of evolved. Um, <laughs> and then, so here in um, bar nine, throwing in a little eighth note triplet, which is a stylistically, uh, you know, that's a signature rhythmic motif in bebop jazz. That's C major seven over A gives you an A minor nine sound. And you look at this chord shape, C major seven over A, there's A minor nine. It's kind of like the Allman Brothers. In memory of Elizabeth Reed. And here I'm doing this thing where I'm tonicizing the root note. What I mean by that is playing the uh, leading tone, the note right underneath it, the surrounding notes that kind of give you a sense of A minor. And then from there, a chromatic walk down. And a nice little uh, minor third to major third, going into the third of D7 altered. So again, targeting a chord tone. 
That's the flat nine, the root, seventh, and then bar 11, I'm targeting the third again of G7, the third of E7, and the third of A minus seven, the third of D7. That's leading into our second chorus. So to back up there a little bit, that's like a, a B minor seven flat five arpeggio. But you play that over a G and it gives you a G9 sound. Really pretty G9 sound. That's E7 flat nine, very clearly outlining that. And then A minor seven arpeggio with a chromatic walk up to D. So I'm using chromatic passing tones as transition notes between the arpeggios and the targeted chord tones. It creates a smooth contour. You know, one of the things uh, that's very important to think about is the shape of the line, not just the notes you're hitting. You don't want everything to follow this kind of textbook sounding sing-songy pattern. You want to vary the, the shape of the line and, and be imaginative and try not to be predictable. That's the downbeat of bar 13, which is we're back to G7, so second chorus. Now here what I'm doing is kind of like what I did earlier. I hit the non-chord tone, a half step below. When I started, I went. I'm kind of doing the same thing again, except for I'm doing it with the fifth of G, which is D. So. And that's kind of cool. You know, you can ride out on one note like that, you know? And uh, going to C7, I'm doing a little bend there because, again, it's the blues. It's a jazz blues. It's, a, it's kind of the distant cousin of pure blues, but you still want to make it bluesy. A little quarter step curl bend there, kind of inspired by John Schofield. And then going into bar 15, um, outlining his D minor 7 to G7 altered change. Targeting the third on the downbeat. F, the third D minor 7. The root. Another little chromatic walk up to the third of G7. You can't go wrong with that. And once again, I'm using that tense sounding G diminished whole tone scale. Which, as I mentioned earlier, was is the seventh mode of A flat melodic minor. Going into C7. I guess the theme of this solo is hitting these approach tones. <laughs> you know, the minor third to the major third. And then that's the ninth. And that's doing the F7 change. Now, again, on F7, I'm using the Lydian dominant mode. Which is the fourth mode of C melodic minor. And throwing another little uh, idiosyncratic, or I'm sorry, idiomatic phrasing signature of bebop, which is that 16th note triplet. Charlie Parker. That descending thing, that's pretty cool. That's um, that's an E flat major seven sharp five chord shape, but played over F. It gives you a really haunting F13 sharp 11 sound. And bar 19, we're at B minus seven. So the third D. You notice I'm, throwing, I'm trying to throw in some rests here because if you just play a steady stream of eighth notes, it's cool that, you know, it's like, wow, you're playing fluently and everything, but it starts to not sound musical after a while. It doesn't sound as conversational as if you throw in some triplets and then some rests, some pauses here. And that's over to B minor seven to E seven alter change in bars 19 and 20. Again, another little chromatic walk up to the third of E. Wow, 
that's like an F minor major seven arpeggio. But played over E gives you E seven flat nine, sharp five. So it's this kind of sound, you know. Um, and then coming down to home stretch here, bar 21. That's kind of a bluesy phrase, right? The D is the, the fifth of G, but over A minor, it gives you the, the minor 11. And that's, that's the ninth and the seventh. So that creates a, it's a bluesy, yet it's also kind of sophisticated in the way it outlines the upper structure harmony. And then over the D7 altered. That's similar to this shape earlier I went. So for now I'm going. That's D diminished whole tone. Also known as a D super locrian mode. Another bebop thing, you know, throwing in that eighth note triplet. Little vibrato. That's over G. And then the G sharp is giving you the third of E7, because now we're doing this again. One, six, two, five. Flat nine of E. Walk up to. That's the fifth of A minor seventh. And then another walk up to the third of D. Flat nine. Then targeting the third of G again. And the ninth, that's our ending. But then just for fun, I rake into the, the sharp 11 and then a little rock and roll bend up. <laughs> up to the uh, the 13th, so that's like giving you, it's like superimposing an A major arpeggio over G7, which gives you G13 sharp 11. 